Hey, it's Chris Lipper from On The Bus Sales Training, Coaching, and Consulting, and today we are discussing Chapter 16 of the workbook, which is on communication, and we are going to start with the audible recording, which hopefully you can hear. Chapter 16, Communication. Communication is, in large, how you say it versus what you say. I had initially taken this chapter out of the book as I really don't feel that I'm a great communicator, especially in the written word, and I misunderstood a lot. Now that it's done, I've put it back in. Communication. 90% of how we're heard versus what we say, and I am the last person who should be giving this class as I am probably the most misunderstood person I know, other than my mother. I'm not responsible for what you hear, and more of what I say is a cop-out. Communicating is making sure that you are understood, and that's your responsibility. Side note, real friends and people that care about you will say the tough things to help you rather than what you want to hear. I'd rather step on your toes versus step on your grave kind of thing. Communication is part of everything we do. It's how we are perceived. Remember that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And how do you get that to happen? Think about everything you've learned from your introductions, your body language, your presentation skills, the way you dress, edict, being focused, follow-up systems, all of it. Some basics from my speaking notes. Who? Us? Them? Everyone? There are no them, by the way. What? What we say, how we say it. Where? Everywhere. Think about it. Difficult people are difficult everywhere. Wonderful people are wonderful everywhere. When? Always, we don't even know that we're doing it most of the time. We don't know when we're being watched kind of thing. This is also how you can catch the genuine people versus the people who have a game face. How? How we communicate. Think of the opportunities and how we do them. Do we speak with our hands over our mouths? What does that say? How about our outgoing voicemail, email signature, hand gestures, etc.? 90% of how we communicate has nothing to do with what we are saying. Meditate on this. What are some of these subtle ways we communicate, and what does it say about us? Is this the message we want? Using bold underlined versus bold and underline. We need to look at the words we use for ourselves and others. Dealing with mistakes, problem clients, and problem issues are challenges and all part of being an owner, being a person that sells, and life in general. We don't have to do these things, we get to. Be grateful you have clients and an opportunity to fix these things. Nobody is perfect. If they were, many of us wouldn't be in business at all. Things break. People need coaching. Things need updating. If roofs lasted forever, we wouldn't need roofers, as I explained to my favorite roofing client this morning. When someone calls upset that they need something done and maybe aggressively, listen to them. They are afraid of something losing the have or not getting something they want. The best thing you can do is let them know that they're heard. The golden rule is treating people the way you want to be treated. The platinum rule is treating people the way they want to be treated. Do that. If you aren't sure how someone wants to be treated, ask them. I made a purchase last week from somebody I really like from a business. I really like and an industry I strongly believe in. They blew the order, missing the delivery by a week. All she had to say was, We screwed up. My bad, we made a mistake. I'm sorry. How can I make this right? Anything other than what she and most say, It's the vendor's fault. It's an employee's fault. The website screwed up. It's a softer thing. Just own it. You messed up and things happen. Communicate. We used to be told the key to retail was location, location, location. That's changed to service and communication, service and communication, service and communication. It's interesting to see how well-run companies with systems in place can thrive where others won't. Loyalty only goes so far in this new market, and the real problem is the local company won't even know why and blame something other than themselves. All right. Chapter 7. Okay, I hope that was useful for you. It's another one of the short chapters towards the end of the book, but I feel there's a lot of information in there and a lot to cover. And those bullet points um, don't really do the importance justice, but it's just my writing style. 
So I think we can agree that communication is 90% of how we say something versus what we say. And I think the point that I make that it's our responsibility to make sure that we're heard. I, I used to always say, you know, listen, I know what I said. I don't know what you heard. And, and that is a cop out, in my opinion, that I'm responsible to make sure that what I'm saying is what is being heard. So I think we can agree with that now that we understood it. Um, and I think people who are friends will call you out on stuff and will step on your toes versus stepping on your grave. And I had to do that this weekend. So I reference in here, difficult people are difficult everywhere. And we were out to dinner with friends and somebody was having a hard time with her order and the food and returned it once and then returned it a second time and then returned it a third time and they brought her a new meal and then she decided she didn't want that either. And I was mortified and it's my reservation. She's there as my guest. And instead of killing her mentally and having her be dead to me, um, I had to talk with her and let her know that that was not appropriate behavior and we don't treat waiters that way and we don't do that. And I don't wanna feel that way when I go out to dinner with you. you know, we're not gonna do that again or we're not gonna go out to dinner again. And she was very apologetic and she says it won't happen again. I, I don't know what the end result will be. My guess is that it will and that will end the relationship. I hope not, uh, I, I want it to work, but I felt it needed to be said. And, um, and so I said something and I feel okay about it. And it was polite and present and just making her aware kind of thing. And it was well-received, it wasn't aggressive. Um, I just needed to do that. Uh, and that's part of communicating. She didn't need to make anyone feel bad about it, just pointing it out that it made me feel uncomfortable and it was awkward and I didn't feel it was appropriate um, when you're a guest of someone to do that to someone. Um, I, I think also the opportunity to deal with unhappy clients. So the establishment that we were at handled it beautifully and they bent over backwards. And they did it because they're grateful that they have clients, right? Here we are in a pandemic. Not everyone's going out. It's very hard to get employees. It's very hard to get customers. Um, we're not seeing the numbers we used to see. So it makes us all more valuable to each other. And I think that they viewed it as not that I have to deal with this, but more of we get to. And that was huge that it was one of those get to opportunities. David Quick, I know you're on here and you're in the IT world. Um, and when somebody calls, I'm, I know you, you don't roll your eyes like, oh God, what's this person want? You view it as an opportunity to serve and to take care of your client, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so you get it, right? And if the phone wasn't ringing, we wouldn't have clients. If we didn't have complaints, we wouldn't have clients. So we're not gonna view these things as bad things. Um, I remember that one reference that I made in here about the, the order I had made and they, they blew the order by a week. Um, I still like the person, I'm friendly and cordial on social media, but I won't order from them again. And it was a food product. So the food, and it was summer and I don't know where the food was for that week. It was sitting in some warehouse somewhere. So I'm not doing that again. It was already overpriced. Um, I was doing it to be kind and be polite. They were starting something new, but they, they really screwed up. But the real screw up was not owning it. Um, so again, they didn't communicate well. And what I heard was, hey man, not my fault. It was the vendor's fault or the website's fault. And that wasn't what I wanted to hear where I'm spending my money on their product and they blew the order. Um, so communication is key. Um, there are certain areas that we communicate we don't think of. Our outgoing voicemail is a really good one. Make sure that says what you want it to say and it feels the way you want it to feel. Your email signature. Now, I'm notorious for putting too much information in there. And my justification is we've got a lot going on all the time. We have a different event every week and 
something big like our virtual trade shows or whatever it might be. But I would put something in your virtual in your email signature um, showing what you do a little further than just your website link. So just think about that, how you're communicating. Uh, if you put too much, you'll end up in spam and that kind of stuff. But anyway, worth noting. So just as an afterthought on communication, um, in our on the bus sales system, we have something called RCIP, where we recap to make sure that we're hearing everything correctly and that we've got it. And it's also replaying it for the client so they hear, or the prospect, I should say, so they hear what it is we're hearing and can confirm it and feel it. So that's part of communication and that works uh, into our favor in a sales situation. Um, any questions? This is a quick, easy one. No? All right, so we'll call it there. And thank you very much for playing. Let me just stop the recording.